Memorial du Mystère Pascal. Memory of the Paschal Mystery. Excellent. Your Eminencies, Your Excellencies, blessed Cardinals and Bishops, dear brothers and sisters and priests, dear brothers and sisters, do this in memory of me. For 2,000 years now, the Church is on its journey, led by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Church goes constantly towards the fullness of truth and of the fulfillment, actually, of God. However, there was and there is still moments in the history of the Church where the Holy Spirit stops us for a moment so that we may look where we are at so that look at the past with recognition and with humility and so that we look with hope that which awaits us in the future. It's the Holy Spirit that has brought us for these days in Canada. The Holy Spirit has gathered us in the diocese, Honorable Diocese of Quebec, and has allowed us to stop before the mystery of the blood and body of Christ, the gift of God for the life of the world. I would like you to, to bow down with faith and with the deepest adoration. I would like to look at one dimension of the mystery of the Eucharist as part of the memorial of the Paschal Mystery. Let us, first of all, ask the question of the memorial. The Eucharist is not just the memorial of the Paschal Mystery as if it was to be understood of, as memory only, as a souvenir and <coughs> of the Pasch of, of the Lord. The Eucharist is also a memorial that places the believer before the question of one's own, I remember. I would like to remember. This is a memorial or a souvenir that places the whole community of the church before the question, what does it mean when I say, I remember, I make memory of, I remember means that I am present to the mystery of Easter. I allow myself to be drawn into that dimension of the world where God saves each human being and saves all of humanity. It's through the grace of faith and the power of a single human that I completely go back, I've been able to go back up to the Calvary to see, to contemplate the unique Paschal Lamb. I leave the Galilee of miracles, the Samaria of the questions on the living waters, and the Jerusalem of the debates with the Pharisees. I let go when I leave the lake of Genesareth, the lake of Galilee, the lake of the abundant and difficult fishing, the, la the lake of the storms, and the lake of the calm waters. And finally, I reach Golgotha. I am there at the heart of the mystery of salvation. 
I remember. I make memory of. In an Eucharistic manner, I want to say, I am not elsewhere, but I am at the heart of the church, at the heart of each human being, at the heart of God's own being. I remember means also I make present the, this mystery wherever I am. The person who has put his foot only once in Golgotha with the gift of the grace of faith carries forever in his or her heart the mark of the Paschal Sacrifice. I remember in the Eucharistic manner means that I am a living image and a witness to the love, to the death, we should say, of, and the resurrection of our Lord. Not only am I making present to the world the mystery of the Pasch of the Lord, but I become myself in a certain way Pasch for my family, for my friends, for those who are close to me and those who are far away. We would be ingrate in respect to the Eucharist if we closed the Eucharist on the altars of the world. We would simply then be spectators of the sacrifice of salvation of Christ on Calvary if we did not become ourselves Calvary. The Eucharist is a mystery rooted in the Paschal mystery. We therefore ask ourselves a question now concerning this mystery. What is mystery? When confronted by mystery, we have to be, first of all, humble. Because if we are in presence of something beyond us, and the Eucharist always will be beyond us, then either we adopt an attitude of humble servants, which will allow us to enter more deeply in the mystery of Easter, either then, in front of mystery, we might adopt an attitude of stewardship or maybe even an attitude of masters of the mystery which not only will close off access to a deeper knowledge of the Eucharist but especially will discredit and impoverish the value of the mystery in the eyes of the whole world. The person who cannot accept his or her smallness before the body and the blood of the Lord shows others more or less consciously that the mystery itself is really not that important. We'll have to ask here the question of our faithfulness to the Eucharistic liturgy on the obedience to the tradition of the Church in the celebration of the Eucharist. The question about sins and about omissions, the question of the meaning of the faithfulness to the prescriptions of the Church concerning the celebration of the Blessed Sacrament. Humility before the, that which is mystery means that we require a simple and deep faith that for God, the bread and the wine, 
the body and the blood are sufficient to save the whole world. Mystery invites us not only to humility, mystery calls us also to knowledge. If I know that I am on the shore of an ocean, I might ask myself the question, on what exists beyond the horizon? And at the same time, with, by asking myself this question, there might appear a desire to depart, to go off, to discover, and to know something more that is still as of yet unimaginable, inconceivable even today. If there was not this natural desire, no one would have ever discovered America and Quebec would not at this time be the place of the Eucharistic Congress. If, therefore, the Eucharist is a Paschal mystery, and if we are aware of being on the shore of this great mystery, let us not be afraid to go off into the sea. Allow ourselves, let us allow ourselves to be carried by this natural desire of knowing that which is, which is impenetrable. Let us not let us not believe that we know everything and that we have gotten to uh, understand everything. The one who stays on the shore of a great ocean, if they remain there, says that there's nothing new beyond the horizon. To believe that the Eucharist is a mystery is, in fact, allowing ourselves to never cease knowing more deeply the past of our Lord. The Eucharist is a mystery of Easter. So there is a question that remains, and particularly the question on Easter. Easter is foremost the passage to freedom. When the chosen people sat at table in Egypt on this unforgettable evening, the tenth of the first month to eat the Paschal lamb, everybody believed that it would be their last night of captivity or of oppression. When Jesus, the Paschal lamb, was slain on the cross, God, in his death, in the death of the Son, had allowed all of humanity to come forth on the pathway to freedom. Every day, in the Eucharist, on the altars of the whole world, God talks under the species of the bread and of the wine in Christ Jesus. You are no longer slave, but you are more than that. You are a child. Therefore, in a world full of anguish and of different types of captivities, though there has to be the voice, the message of the Eucharist, which proclaims with more and more strength and more and more clarity, that you are not slave anymore, but child. And as a child, you are inheritor through the grace of God. It 
It is the gift of the Eucharist for the world. A gift that guarantees the end of the cap uh, the end of captivity, that assures the freeing pask of all person. To celebrate Easter implies that we need to eat. We can almost say that there is no real passage, no real pa no real road to freedom without eating the pask itself. On the 10th of the first month, each Israelite had to buy a lamb per family, a lamb per house. Everyone had to eat the Pasch. If for us the death and the resurrection of Jesus is the Pasch of the New Covenant, the New Alliance, and if the Eucharist is the memorial and the presence of this past, it is difficult to talk about the liberating gift of the Eucharist if there is no eating going on, nor the body, nor the blood of the Lord will ever be gift for us, nor for us, nor for the world, if they are not eaten with dignity. St. Paul wrote, the one who will eat the bread or will drink the cup of the Lord without knowing what he is doing will have to answer of the body and blood of the Lord. We therefore have to examine ourselves before eating the bread and before drinking this cup. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to conclude this reflection on the memorial of the Paschal Mystery by some words taken from the last encyclical of the servant of God, the Pope John Paul II, in his letter Ecclesia de Eucharistia. And here is what he says. But, dear brothers and sisters, allow me in a expression of intimate joy in union with your faith and in order to confirm your faith, allow me to also give my own witness of faith on the whole question of the Blessed Eucharist. Ave verum corpus natum. In truth, he took flesh from the Virgin Mary and was crucified for humans. And here we find the treasure of the church, the heart of the world, the guarantee of life that all humans aspire to, even unconsciously. This mystery is great. Assuredly, it goes way beyond us and questions the possibility of our spirit to go beyond appearances. Allow me, as Peter at the end of the Eucharistic prayer in the Gospel of John, that I say to Christ in the name of the whole church and in the name of each one of you, Lord, to whom shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. Amen. Amen.